Hey guys, does this look familiar to you? No, no, not the girl, the coffee can. You'll remember, it's been a little bit, but I did a playlist about a 1947 zero zero seventeen Martin flat top guitar and I think I'll give you uh, a link to that playlist up there wait until the end this one will be at the end of it and you can always loop back and see what we did uh, but it had the bridge had pulled up on it raising the top there were some body cracks um, some braces that were loose uh, the the part of the top was sunken um, and worst of all it had a hole on the side of the guitar up on close to the neck and um, you might recall my fix was this coffee can kind of matched the radius up here on the upper bow of the guitar and so I got a piece of Honduran mahogany got it to the thickness I needed and then just basically steamed everything and put uh, that on this can and formed it so the grain pattern looked pretty good and lining up with that guitar and then I actually matched the patch to the jagged parts of the guitar instead of the other way around and I think it turned out pretty good and it's in that playlist up there but that guitar has disappeared uh, from me for a bit and that's because I took it up to see Fred and that's why um, this episode is called a moment with Fred a minute with Fred and there's a playlist up there um, and so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go up and we're gonna see some of the finer workings of a great luthier um, so let me frame this like this um, Y'all know I started doing cigar boxes and coffee cans and license plates and stuff. And then I moved into arch tops, mainly because I remembered them in catalogs when I was a kid. Uh, I never got one. Um, and they're interesting. They're kind of like, they kind of look like violins. And so I started off fixing stuff you see that crack there you see the body is separated necks need to be reset top is sunken there's everything wrong with this guitar but it's a yard sale guitar and i got 50 bucks into it and so i could hide the bad parts with some license plates or matchbooks or whatever i did and get them out to a blues player and people play them and they like them and they're pretty tough but jumping from uh, something like that to something like this 1918 Gibson with the same kind of issues, see that crack along the neck and sides and got a couple little splits going on down here and these blotches and that piece of binding that's missing. Jumping from 50 bucks to something like this that's worth a couple thousand just the way it sits that's like jumping from scorpions blackout to tchaikovsky piano concerto number one yeah so i've i'm fortunate to have access to a couple really good luthiers and what we're going to learn at fred's today is once you make a repair like that you get that hole patched up or that crack done how do you detail the work or it doesn't look like it was broken and how do you do it without collapsing the value of the instrument we're actually adding to the instrument well the trick is if I can summarize this before you even start is don't take away when you can add now let's catch up with Fred and learn some fancy tricks you're going to pay attention to this all right as you probably remember from past things we had put a patch in here and that's what it looks like right now now it didn't look like that in the beginning that's a new piece of wood and that's a new piece of wood and there was a hole here and we had a choice here was the choice 
Okay, here it is, a great guitar. If we look in the guitar price book, we're going to see a guitar like this. It would, to, to, as a matter of fact, we should actually look at that. Okay, this is a 0017, and it's from 1947. Now, if you have one in excellent condition or good to excellent condition, this book says you can buy it any day for 2800 to 3600 No way. It's not going to happen. This book, I think, is either made by somebody who at one point in time talked to a series of guitar shops. From what I can understand, the people that make that guitar price book are not calling anybody I know going, when's the last time you sold a 47 for, what was it, 2800 bucks? Forget it. You can't get a new 0017 for that. You know, or maybe you can. I don't know what Martin's charging. But the bottom line is, don't trust those books because, uh, you know, the best way to figure out how much a guitar is worth is run around and try to buy one. Don't look in it some guitar finder's price book or something. Okay, so let's go to this guitar again. Remember this guitar from an earlier thing. I think probably Ken has a picture of it when it's still at a hole, right Ken? Alright, so now it doesn't have a hole anymore. We we took a piece of mog and we and we put it in there. And uh, Ken bent the mahogany, pre-bent the mahogany using a coffee can which is as good as anything, you know. Um, you can go out and buy a, uh, a side bender from any number of places and, uh, you know, you can bend sides. You know, the old way was you would heat up a big piece of pipe with a blowtorch and you would take a, a a side that has been soaked in water and you would bend it to the shape you wanted it and you know anyway so now we're in a place where we want to do a touch up right now we've got light coming from a different place see how that's there that's untenable because obviously it's giving me two different colors see so I can't use it. The sunlight is coming through at a place that is going to screw around with my eye. Now I use two different brushes. I use that brush when I when I want to uh, adjust the color. And what I'll do is I'll test the color next to something that I know I want to match. So I'll dip this in water. People will say, well, why don't you put water in there? Well, I can't put water in here and be able to govern uh, exactly how much of a color I need to get. So let's say I get in here like that. I'm going over to this edge where I see I've got a darker, a, a greater amount of that color. Now I'm only going to get one chance at it. Okay, we're pretty good. Now, that color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep coming across here and see if I can have that same kind of consistency. See that 
pop up place right in there. Maybe I'll touch that a little. Pretty good. Okay, so I don't want to bore you, but that's what I'm going to keep doing. Put my brush back in the water. Is that really the same color or not? When it dries, it's going to look lighter than what it was. So now I'm going to go back over and look. So when it's wet, it's telling me the color it will be. By the time it dries out, I, I can't keep darkening it, I, uh, you know. I, I, luckily, I'm using very high caliber watercolors. You can read that, Ken. Windsor Newton Artist Watercolor. This one's Raw Umber. Series 1A A A. Now when you look at the pan, you will see that there have been innumerous different guitars colored. And each of these trays has a mix of, I love this little dot of crimson red because it always comes into the play, but you can tell there's not a big glob of anything on here. This is just going in, wetting and picking up the color you need. Yeah, let's do something else right now with the light as bad as it is. But let's go after these dings on the neck. See them? That's where the lacquer has been fractured. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can get that fractured lacquer to get emulsified. And we will do that. First thing we'll use is Everclear. So I'm going to take my brush and put it in the Everclear. And see how that makes it go away. Now it won't stay that way. But uh, what we're doing is we're, we're proceeding with purpose and also bowed to the instrument. We don't want to 
do anything that is too radical. But look at what we did. Normally, I wouldn't be showing this because, as I said before, in some cases, it would be like leaving the monkeys in charge of the bananas. So, let's see. So, remember the way the neck looked. Now, look at it. Now, that is going to start lightening up as that evaporates, but at least it's telling me that when I use the agent that liquefies lacquer, I'll probably be okay. Notice, look at how fine my brush is. You know, if you don't have a brush this big or this small, get one. They say the right tool for the job, but they forget to say the wrong tool for the job, you know. So we're making a lot of headway. Fred, let me ask you a question. When there's a scratch put in a guitar, it strikes me that it's more kind of like a a groove in which maybe you're digging a ditch with a shovel or something. Whenever there's a, 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 a dent or a ding, something has to get pushed up for something to be down. And broken. In other words, it, it's actually got a crack. You know, it's cracked the lacquer, and now the, the lacquer is like a, it's like a broken window. What you're seeing in the crack of the window is the light hitting the crack at a different place, showing you where the crack is. So, if you, uh, you're gonna multiply that lacquer, then, you know, you're rocking. So it seems to me that if the lacquer is cracked or fractured or whatever, that there could be air underneath it, there could be dirt. There could Absolutely. Be dirt. Air underneath it is where it's at. And if you go ahead and finish over that by simply sanding it... It look the same. You're, everything is still underneath it, so what you're doing now by emulsifying this kind of gets underneath it and kind of gets that stuff... Right, so take a look at that one thing right there. Watch it now. Now, I'm going to use what emulsifies lacquer in a minute, but right now I'm just seeing what's there with the actually denatured alcohol, or because after COVID we have a hard time getting denatured alcohol, I'm using Everclear, which is, I don't know how many proof, it's ridiculous. So what I want you to notice here is where Fred is working right now, we're zoomed in, but you can see that it appears to almost fix what's wrong. But when you yeah. come back after the alcohol dries out, you'll see yeah. that it exposes, right. it almost looks like water spots, so it tells you right. where everything is damaged and the right. depth of it. Right, so watch that place right there. That's what it'll look like when I emulsify it with the agent that emulsifies lacquer. Okay, I've taken a good look at it. I have the agent that emulsifies lacquer. What about them apples? So what we're seeing here, what we want to remember is the Everclear almost made the spots go away using uh, a technique and letting it dry out kind of showed you the, the, the parameters of the, each damaged spot. Now we're coming in and emulsifying it 
mean thinning out the lacquer, making it more fluid. And as this dries out, you can see that there's lacquer on that rag. And you know, you can feel the dents here, can feel them. This is the guy who's leaned it against the glass coffee table or you name it, but you feel that, right? Yeah. The 600A wet and dry. Now rub your hand over it. Pretty smooth, huh? Yes. Because the only thing you're feeling are those dents. So, what let's do... is once again, we'll use exactly what emulsifies lacquer. a little larger brush because like that is what Ken was talking about right there I don't know if you can see it but it looks like a little cloud and that's where the lacquer got banged and separated from the wood what we want to do is kind of emulsify it do this, you you gonna know, take a word like emulsify it and then start thinking about like a song like emulsify yourself. Emulsify yourself. Come on and emulsify it. So now what are we gonna do when we gonna emulsify it? see right away that we're making some serious headway with this liquid that emulsifies lacquer. Now I'm going to mention the word, but God help you if you try this on your own and you're not, you're not really familiar with it. Don't ever think about doing anything to a good instrument. Better leave that to the guys that have gone before you. There's nothing like experience to make something turn out great. So you don't want to work with a great instrument and have it turn out other than great. So guys, translation. Start off on $50 arch tops that you bought at some yard sale with the neck broke off. Once you get those down, then you start thinking about this kind of stuff. And you've watched me do that for probably five or six years, you loyal viewers that subscribe for more than a week. Yeah, none of you guys are just sitting in the basement in their socks of their parents' house, you know? No. Talking about the guys, really. By the way, we should mention the greatest uh, place to view the master himself, Ken Parker. You never mentioned Ken Parker on your show. Oh yeah, we'll give you a link to Ken Parker's channel right up there, right about now. Oh, perfect. Because Ken Parker is, he is the king. He's the Stradivarius of repairmen. Nobody can sharpen his files.
Okay, we're making some serious headway here, folks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use clear lacquer. You'll hear people use the term drop fill. And I just can't. I mean, I don't know. Maybe as you get older, you get to be a curmudgeon, but that is still so stupid. Because if you're filling a low spot, you want to do it carefully. Why have a bunch of extra that you need to work off? By the way, the amateurs that get two pieces that are uneven, they, the amateurs will try to sand them even. And what the professionals will do is fill the low spot Fred, while you're working there, I have a question for you. Let's say that you have a lacquer bottle like that little one right there. And through time and you're working, the amount of oxygen in the bottle changes after a while. What would you say to do? Does it affect what the lacquer does if there's more air in the bottle? Totally does. So what we got is a marble. You drop the marbles in. And that fills up the bottle. And you don't have this giant space, you know. Right, now this is lacquer that is amber colored. And I use it on, you know, guitars that have less lacquer that's turned amber. But notice how thick it is. And notice how much air there is in the in the space. So I don't mind because this is meant to be thick. And we'll come back to it uh, another day when that's dry and we'll pick it up from there. We don't want to be in a hurry. We want to really be patient about it. And what I did is I cleaned out my brush for the next time. And I'm using a white paper towel. And I always use a white paper towel because I'm guaranteed that the next time I pick it up, I won't have any stain in it. But it, trust me, every time I pick it up, even if I know that's the case, it's like if somebody hands you a gun, you check if it's loaded. Same thing with a brush. You know, especially if you're working in a shop with other people. Oh man, you gotta be careful. So anyway, remember how the neck used to look. Of course, right now it looks like, you know, when a woman goes and gets the face peel, you gotta look at it and go, oh, I hope it doesn't stay that way. But anyway, uh, it'll look better when we're finished. But we're going to pick it up later. And in the meantime, uh, you guys have a great time with my pal Ken. Okay, guys, remember the can now? Alrighty then. Oh, if you want to see that playlist for everything we did to uh, that Martin in the shed here, it's up there and I'll add this video to the end of that playlist so pick up there a um, couple things that are takeaways here first off if this is your skill set the old Rex there's nothing wrong with that you're gonna you're gonna make your mistakes or learning there but don't jump into something like this without knowing what you're gonna do because 
there's not that many of these left out here this 1918 Gibson I've had this for six months I've been waiting to die in, dive into it but there's some things here that I need more experience with to fix and uh, working on that Martin with Fred is how I get that experience next um, don't rush things if you're trying to make the paint match if you're trying to make uh, the the uh, lacquer right if you want to build it up little by little um, in fact we're gonna do a whole next episode I could have made this episode really long by talking about how you get those lacquer fills taken down it's with a razor blade and some scotch tape we're gonna make an episode to catch you up on that kind of thing so you can see how do you keep the old finish but still fix the dings and the dents and it's up to razor blades keep your stuff clean operate in light and above all patience some of these guys that are fixing these finishes people are really picky about their guitars you got three four five six different guitars going on and you're just going over there for a couple minutes and dropping lacquer here working the razor blade and the wet dry sandpaper letting things dry off and building and building and building and getting rid of those flaws and blemishes but it takes patience and it takes experience nothing wrong with getting a piece of wood pretending it's a guitar staining it lacquering it taking a hammer and putting a couple dents in it and learning what you're learning on this channel uh, by practicing on that and then do that before you dive into a really expensive guitar so as always thank you Fred you are the best um, there is a, a link down below to to Ken Parker the guy is awesome I'm gonna give you a link to some he did about arch tops and the development of the arch top up there and I would suggest you subscribe to his channel you will at some point in the future don't forget when you see the episode about razor blades jump on that one because you're gonna get the next step in doing fine finishing and restoration work on good guitars thanks for watching give me a like and a sub, sub little of rented lips subscribe if you haven't and i will see you soon